going to be recording this webinar for folks who weren't able to make it. And I wanted to um, welcome you to um, joining us today and to this whole community inclusion webinar on celebrating the high holidays with children of all abilities. So we're going to get started. I really appreciate you being here today and um, appreciate your taking the time to be with us. I know for some of you who are here, um, you are a family member of someone with a disability and you're looking to get resources. I know others of you are professionals who work in the field and who um, are looking for resources that you're going to be able to share with the families that you work with. So um, I'm really delighted that we have a range of people here who, um, who can help us to share these resources out in the world. So today I'm going to take just a brief moment to share about what our work is at Whole Community Inclusion. We're going to examine barriers that could prevent full participation in the high holidays for a variety of different reasons. And then we're gonna suggest creative approaches to solutions for participation. There's always a way. Um, we're gonna focus on the themes and feelings that we want our children to experience at the holidays. And then I'm going to get into multi-sensory ways to engage in those themes about the holidays at home. Things that families can do together, cooking and music and using technology and more fun. And then I'll talk about some opportunities here in the Philadelphia area for community participation and open up to questions and answers. I'm sorry, with this new webinar format, I'm actually looking. I think there was a place to write in a Q&A. Um, if you see it and you have a question, please let me know. So our work here at Whole Community Inclusion, an initiative of Jewish Learning Venture, is to focus on creating learning activities accessible to all families, empowering congregations through workshops, trainings, and consultation, and providing forums like this one today for parents, for educators, for Jewish communal leaders, so that we can all work together to create a more inclusive community here in Philadelphia. Um, we have many generous sponsors who are making this possible. And I also want to acknowledge that our work is taking us doing trainings um, outside of the Philadelphia area. So if there's something that you might be interested in and how we could help your community, just shoot me an email and I'd be delighted to talk with you. So I wanna transition us into thinking about the feeling of the high holy days, which are almost upon us. So I'm going to invite you to think about a time in your life when you felt connected at the high holidays. It could be sitting in a synagogue and maybe it was a prayer that moved you or a song, or maybe it's just a memory of the holidays or or some feeling that the holidays inspire in you. And take a moment to think back. Welcome to everyone who's just come on. And so my invitation to think about your own personal connection to the high holidays is to raise up this bigger question, how can we make sure that people of all abilities have access to what the holidays have to offer us, to those moments of connection, introspection, renewal, feeling a part of the community. And that's what our focus is today. So we're gonna begin by thinking about children, and this could go for really people of any age who have cognitive learning disabilities, maybe sensory processing issues, and um, maybe having barriers to participating. So some of those barriers could be that 
you could be in the same place, the same synagogue, but it feels very different. And we see that image of, of the person feeling really anxious and overwhelmed. If you normally walk into a synagogue and, and um, are able to just go right into the sanctuary and get comfortable, it's different to have to wait in a line to register. The lobby itself may look totally different. The furniture may be rearranged. Um, to accommodate the lines and the people. And then once inside, if a child is used to going to, say, touch about services or family services, the music, the new sock is different for the holidays. And so it's that concept of, oh, it's the same place, but this is feeling different. And then, of course, the length of the day, the time that we expect um, children to be in synagogue, there may be a different expectation. New isn't always comfortable for our kids. I'm especially thinking of our kids with sensory sensitivities, the tradition of wearing your new clothes for Rosh Hashanah, and those tags and the stiffness of a shirt, the tightness of shoes. Um, a colleague I was talking to yesterday talked about, oh, the feeling of having to wear stockings or tights when you've just been used to wearing shorts and being casual. All those things can make the day uncomfortable. And of course, just a general sense of sensory overwhelm, that there are lots of people. Seating may be different. There may be assigned seating. And um, I'm going to talk in, on the next slide about preparing for the shofar. And that, that, that um, ancient cry from the ram's horn is so connected to the holidays. And for some kids who have auditory sensitivity, it's, it's really a lot to take in. So we've got to be creative, we've got to be proactive and think ahead to how we can help everyone participate in the community. Um, one thing that we can do is give kids social stories so that they can, in really simple language and with pictures, anticipate what's coming on the holidays. So um, this resource is from Gateways in Boston, jgateways.org. You'll find lots of social stories and other resources that you can download, print, put on an iPad. And this just goes through what a shofar is and the sound that it makes and how you might feel about loud sounds and what you could do if the sound is too loud and just giving the child the experience of knowing what to expect is so important to helping an anxious child feel calm. You also may wanna bring noise canceling headphones for children, again, with the auditory sensitivity. For all of our kids, packing ahead, making sure you've got snacks and favorite toys and fidgets, um, making a plan to think about that registration process. Again, if waiting in a line is involved, that you may have one parent take the child and the other person go deal with the registration if you have two parents, or it could be a grandparent or a friend, someone to help you out. Thinking through a plan for the whole day, it may include bringing in your sitter to be with your kid for some of the day so that you can really focus on services. If you have a, a TSS or another worker who's, who's you could um, have your child with. Parents really need to think ahead about what the synagogue is offering in terms of childcare and to be in touch with the folks in charge of childcare. Um, a, a great child care registration process would have questions about special needs. And again, not every synagogue is quite there yet. So you want to find out, are the child care workers equipped? Um, can you give them information ahead of time that could help your child be there? Could you bring a TSS to the child care room? Are there teens maybe who could help out? Another thing that we're encouraging synagogues to do is to set aside a quiet room where families can go together and just take a break where there could be some books and puzzles. And so parents may want to reach out and find out ahead of time. Um, back to the issue of the clothes, make sure all clothes are broken in, tried in ahead of time, does not have, even if it's something new, wearing it new on Rosh Hashanah is not necessary.
And finally, if you're, if you're um, just feeling like it's too much for you, for your child to be in the synagogue this year, there are lots of streaming services. So if it's better for you to be at home that day, that if you want to participate in services, there are options to do so by webcast. And I'm happy to recommend those webcasts for you. So I want us to turn now to our attention of, you know, that's a lot of work to prepare a child to be in community in the synagogue, which may be right or not right for your family. What are the important feelings or themes that we'd like our children to take away from the holiday? And think back to the first slide when I asked you to re reflect on your own connections. The themes of, of the high holidays can feel very abstract for, our, for adults as well as for children. And um, sometimes we overthink it. And so I pulled out a few abstract themes that we can help make very concrete for children. My favorite theme, of course, connected to Rosh Hashanah is sweetness. And we can ask our children, what makes you feel happy? Who do you love? Who loves you? If a child is nonverbal and doesn't communicate using words, if they use um, picture symbols or a communication device on the iPad, you, you can have pictures of activities and people that make them happy and have them point and select. So you can bring that idea of we, we are wishing a sweet new year, that we want to fill your new year with all these things. Speaking of that, that children can relate to a new year by pointing out all the new things that are happening in their own life. Are they going to a new school or a new classroom? Have they started a new therapy or new activities? Can relate to the new year by reflecting on the new things happening in their life. And as we move into Yom Kippur and we're focusing on tshuva and changing and forgiveness and saying sorry and letting go all these big you know it can become complex things can just keep it very simple for our children and for ourselves we all make mistakes we get a new chance we get to start over so um I have a son who's 13 years old who is on the autism spectrum and also has intellectual disabilities. And one of the ways that um, I bring the holiday experience to him is by thinking about it as a process. I don't just sort of want to land that day in synagogue on Rosh Hashanah, but I want to bring Rosh Hashanah into his world through multi-sensory activities that he can relate to and begin to experience and enjoy at home. Music is really great for him and for many of our kids. Um, we know that music speaks to us in a different part of the brain. And one of my favorite quotes from Hans Christian Andersen, where words fail, music speaks. So if your child has an iPad where they listen to music or you play music in the car, start playing some Rosh Hashanah music, you can check out, here's a playlist on our J Kid Philly website. If you scroll down, we've got a whole bunch of resources and fun videos you can check out. Here's a playlist, Spotify playlist, and we've got some really good songs here that you can just listen to and sing to together with your kids. It's one of my favorites. I'll stop for now, but just to give you that idea. Um, I like to create songs about the holiday from familiar songs that kids already know. Here are a few examples. You can be creative and think about the songs that your child or your students like. If you're ready for the new year, clap your hands. Okay, I'm not going to torture you by singing on. Um, this is a fun one to the tune of the wheels on the bus. The chauffeur in the shul goes toot, 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 toot. The chauffeur in the shul goes toot, toot, toot on Rosh Hashanah morning. Again, we're singing those songs through the day, getting the child familiar with um, the themes and the symbols of the holiday. 
Cooking is another wonderful activity to help your child get ready for um, Rosh Hashanah. This is actually a cookbook I wrote um, a few years ago called The Kitchen Classroom, and you can check out the website kitchenclassroomforkids.com that has recipes written broken down with a parent's guide and teacher's guide to help engaging in developmental skills through cooking. And um, um, visual pictures. So for kids who learn best through visuals, they can follow the process of the recipe through the pictures as well as the words. And I'm going to show you a short video clip. Hey. I'm gonna move it ahead. This is my son, George, who I said is now 13 and a half. Here he is nine years old. And we're going to do, we're learning to read some words. And this is George, who again is on the more severe end of the autism spectrum. He's working with me on slicing those apples. We're putting them on a baking tray. Just cover this with a little bit of organic extra virgin coconut oil. Here he goes. If you want to know about the benefits of coconut oil, please. Just drop me a line on my face. So this is a Rosh Hashanah recipe. We're playing with apples and honey. I'm gonna keep the so he's out. gonna slice so up gonna slice all the apples. Apple he does another one really beautifully. Here he goes. Okay, he takes ready? one to the month. And push. So again, parents That's may so not know what their kids are able to do with a little bit of support. Uh, George, you took a bite of that one. We'll save it for you to snack. When we finish, we've got our apples on the baking sheet. Awesome. This is up. Oh, hang on, please. We're going to keep these over here. <laughs> these, I know, usually we I just want to show you the honey. Apples, but we have the honey. Hang on, mister. Okay. Right? Let's wait. So he's really honey. excited. Yeah. So can you find the word honey? There it is. Here's honey. So we're going to squeeze. Squeeze the honey. Okay, so this is just to get his memories of apple and honey from all the years that we've done little, very simple cooking activities like this. He now has memories of Rosh Hashanah being about apples and honey. For Rosh Hashanah, it is traditional. There we go. And we're gonna bake them, and it's a really delicious, easy dish. But again, just a simple activity, um, but something to take the abstract concept of sweetness and newness and to build that tradition into your family life. Another thing that you can do at home with your kids is to use technology. Many of our kids on the autism spectrum, cerebral palsy with, um, intellectual disabilities are masters at navigating the iPad. And there's some really cool iPad apps out there. This is um, Wake Up World. It's an interactive Rosh Hashanah book um, created by Bimbom. As you see, you can find that on the, on the um, iTunes store. This is iShofar. This, again, for the child who's, you know, maybe just getting used to the sound of the shofar, you can hear all the sounds of the shofar on your device and get used to what that sound is like and integrate it a little bit. Um, there's some great videos free that you can download and start watching today, you know, in the week leading up to um, Rosh Hashanah, this is from Godcast, a shofar calling song. This is a great one. I love Shalom Sesame. And um, they have a whole variety. Look at all these different themes, familiar characters like Grover, really focusing on, you know, the word apology, all kinds of themes that you can find on the Shalom Sesame videos. And there are also so many fun pop music songs now. Um, bands like the Fountainheads that take some, you know, pop songs. This is, uh, let's skip this part in case you haven't seen the latest. Here we go. This is Dip Your Apple. 
And so if kids know these pop songs, it's really fun to play. Here we've got another fountainhead that's got the minions in it. All right, so anyway, you can explore on your own, but some of my favorite are the Fountainheads and Aish. And to start, you know, just putting them on your child's device, listening to some videos together and getting them ready for the idea that Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah are on their way. So these are all, as I said, processes that we want to invite parents and kids to try together. Um, and you don't have to try everything at once. You might try, you know, some songs this year, maybe next year you'll take on cooking. But there are also things that you can do together outside of going to synagogue that can really make the holidays sweet and wonderful for you. Apple picking is a great tradition that you could do with your family, honey tasting, where you get um, lots of different kinds of honey and pour them out and, and everyone gets to share about which ones they like. Tashlik is another very experiential part of the holiday. Um, and many families will join the synagogue, go to a body of water and throw away those breadcrumbs in a symbolic letting go. It's something you could also do if that's too much or too busy for your child, just as a family to take a walk together to, um, to a creek or to a body of water near you and to talk about the idea of letting go and to have some fun with that tradition. Here in the Philadelphia area, I'm really happy to share that we have two synagogues, Temple Beth Shalom over in Cherry Hill and Temple Beth Halal Bethel in Wynwood, that are doing services that are actually um, at special times with a sensory friendly setting, with, um, with visual schedules. And if you'd like information about those services, I'm happy to share that with you. One of the other things that we introduced with our whole community inclusion program this year was the idea of signage. Um, we created a template that, and we shared it with synagogues to use, just letting families know that if they need accommodations, there are people to contact, and these signs are being used all over the area. Um, and again, if you're a family member and you're thinking about this is triggering for you some questions and some wanting to plan some special accommodations for your um, for your child, now is the time to call ahead to the synagogue office and to you know whether it's with registration or seating or parking, whatever it may be, that you feel empowered to go ahead and to reach out and request what you need. We didn't spend time on today's webinar thinking about people with auditory and visual supports needs, but I wanted to share some places where you can go um, to share with families or, or for your own use. The Jewish Braille Institute has large print moxerine as well as Braille Moxarim available. The Jewish Deaf Resource Center is an incredible center and they actually have um, a program in which they will help give funds to a synagogue to hire an ASL interpreter. So again, I know for now, for this year, it's late to think about that, but it's something to put on your radar thinking about the holidays going forward. A lot of people who are hard of hearing or deaf also prefer captioning, screens with captioning, and more communities are tuning in to the fact that that's a, a, a very viable option. Um, Total Caption is, is an agency that can help set that up for you. And again, if it, that's something that you need in your community, I'm happy to, to get you in touch. I wanted us to also just think about for your family, for the professionals that are on this webinar who are working with other families, the idea of exclusion and isolation that many families can feel at the holiday time. Um, are there people looking around at your community who would come, but transportation is an obstacle? Can you make sure to reach out, to make a phone call, to find out what they need? And that for many people um, who have disabilities and for their families, 
the holiday meal time can be a lonely time. They, they may not have a social network. They may not have family. And to think about, again, this is really more directed to the professionals, how you could reach out and um, make sure that people have a place not only to be for the, for the services, but to think about the celebration part of, that are so important to the holidays. And if you're a family and, you know, it's hard for you to go to meals and to make the holidays festive, I am happy to talk with you um, about some ideas. It might be finding another family you could meet up with, maybe have a Rosh Hashanah afternoon picnic. And, um, but to think about the, the fact that you, you know, you can create the holiday that works best for your family and their there are creative ways to do that. So I know I've shared a whole lot of information with you in the last half hour together. This is my email and my phone number, and um, I'm gonna close the webinar in a moment. I'm sorry I did not figure out how to do the question answer piece today, um, but if you, Oh, let's see, I'm just checking. Yeah, if you, I think what would be easiest is taking in this information. If you have a question, a comment, a thought for your family or for a family you know, please shoot me an email this afternoon and I would be delighted to get in touch with you and help you, help you come up with a creative approach. Thank you so much for joining us today.